Before we start the video, I'd like to mention Heroic Replicas. You might recognise their work from their coveted prizes at events like Games Done Quick and Desert Bus for Hope, like their Tempered Master Sword, All Metal Hylian Shield, or Zora Electric and Bass Guitars. Dave from Heroic Replicas has been a fan of the channel for a while, and he sent me a Replica Master Sword, and I promised that if I liked it, I'd help promote his work. And I've got to say, this is the single coolest Zelda-related item I own. It's a genuine Master Sword, made of carbon and bronze, and I still can't really believe it. I'm so thankful to Dave for sending this out, it's absolutely unbelievable. Heroic replicas really are the best in the business when it comes to this stuff. It's a perfect copy of the modern version of the sword. Insanely well built, with every detail replicated, like the Triforce symbol on the blade, and I'm so honoured to own one. To help fund future replicas, Dave is auctioning off two replicas he has on hand. The first is a Master Sword. The one up for auction has a cast bronze hilt, tempered high carbon blade, and comes with a concrete pedestal. The other replica up for auction, get ready for this, is a full-scale fierce deity sword from Majora's Mask. I can't even say that without smiling. Over 60 inches overall, and constructed of over 15 pounds of solid aluminium, it matches its appearances in Majora's Mask 3D and Hyrule Warriors, as well as the original comic-style concept art from the original Majora's Mask. And finally, if you want a customised replica of your own, even if you miss out on these auctions, you can visit his site at heroicreplicas.com and drop him a line. Let's get into the video. The eternal hero of Hyrule, Link, is only ever as strong as the items he carries with him. From hookshots to hammers, bows to bombs, slingshots to... severed heads? Link is always accompanied by an arsenal of different tools and weaponry. But despite the versatility of his items, his most iconic weapon is almost always his sword. The Kakiri Sword, Gilded Sword, Locomo Sword, Ancient Sword, Four Sword, Link's had his fair share of powerful blades. But among all others, one sword in particular stands out. The Master Sword. The Master Sword is known as the Blade of Evil's Bane, a sword imbued with the sacred power to seal darkness. But across the Zelda series, this blue-hilted blade has been shown to house more powers than just evil sealing and grass cutting, powers that were largely unexplained or haven't been seen since their debut. The Master Sword is likely the single most consistently powerful item in the Zelda series. So let's have a look at some of the lesser known, somewhat forgotten abilities of the sword that seals the darkness. If you've played a Zelda game, you're familiar with the Master Sword. It's usually found about halfway through your quest, pulled from a pedestal in some long forgotten temple, and is often the only weapon with which you can kill the game's final boss. Its sacred power to seal away evil is constantly referenced. But what's often more easily missed are the glimpses the games give us at this weapon's true, terrifying power. This isn't just any regular magic sword designed to oust evil, this is the physical manifestation of the divine will of the gods. The story of the Master Sword's origin is well known, forged thousands of years before Skyward Sword by the goddess Hylia, a being created by the creators of the world to watch over the Triforce. Likely sensing an oncoming evil, Hylia created a sword, the Goddess Sword, within which she housed a guiding spirit, Fi. This sword was bathed in her divine light, created for a sole purpose, to aid the chosen hero of the goddess in his quest to vanquish evil. Over the course of Link's journey during Skyward Sword, however, the goddess sword is soaked in the pure power of the three golden goddesses, manifested as sacred flames. This holy might transforms the sword into the master sword, far longer and sharper than the goddess sword, imbued with the ancient power of force. This already incredibly powerful sword is then blessed by Zelda, the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, giving it the legendary power to repel evil, becoming the true Master Sword. This power to repel evil isn't a constant power of the Master Sword. Rather, the blade must be blessed by those with the powers of the goddess. When it lacks this blessing, the hilt of the blade folds in and the yellow gem grows dark. 
This occurred in the Wind Waker when Ganondorf killed the Sages of Earth and Wind, whose prayers sustained the sword's power, and in Skyward Sword before Zelda had blessed it. The Blade's latest appearance is of course in Breath of the Wild, carried originally by Link before the Great Calamity, though becoming damaged in the resulting Cataclysm. Princess Zelda placed the sword in the care of the Great Deku Tree before heading to face Ganon, where it still remains a century later. The Master Sword in the present is one of the most powerful one-handed weapons in the game, especially when in the presence of Malice, where it glows brightly with sacred energy. When Link is at full health, he's able to throw sword beams with the blade, and can undertake the trial of the sword to increase the blade's potency. Aside from the blade beams, the traditional evil-busting might, and the fact that it can't break, just run out of energy, the Master Sword is simply the regular sword. But this is far from always the case. On multiple occasions, the blade's been shown to house unbelievably powerful abilities. Powers which make it without a doubt the single most powerful item item in the Zelda series. The first, and most famous, is the Master Sword's connection to time. On multiple occasions, the Master Sword has acted as a key, or a vessel, to altering the flow of time. The first appearance of this ability was in Ocarina of Time, where the Master Sword resides in the Pedestal of Time, in the Temple of Time, locked behind the Door of Time, which can only be opened with the Ocarina of Time, and the Spiritual Stones. When Link pulls the blade, he's transported to the Chamber of Sages within the Sacred Realm, meeting Raru, the Sage of Light. However, Link isn't the same kid who lifted the blade. He's now a young adult, tall and strong. It's revealed that Link was too young to be the Hero of Time, so was sealed within the Sacred Realm for seven years. This makes sense. We know that the Master Sword is the final key to the Sacred Realm, and it's not unbelievable that Link's spirit could have been sealed within while his body aged. But this concept gets confusing when Link places the sword back into the pedestal, transporting himself back seven years through time, back to a child. Sheik explains this phenomenon, that the Master Sword is a ship with which one can sail upstream and downstream through Time's River, and that if Link holds the Ocarina of Time in the Master Sword, he holds Time itself in his hands. Princess Zelda goes a step further, calling the Master Sword the Sword of Time during the final battle. So, the Master Sword clearly has some influence over Time itself, but this influence doesn't only affect he who wields it, it can be forced upon others, too. The Blade's abilities can be used aggressively. This formidable ability is seen in the Wind Waker, where the Master Sword again acts as a key, keeping the seal on Ganondorf and his magic intact. This seal is evident in Hyrule Castle, where Time itself has stopped. The area's colour is washed out, and all monsters within are frozen mid-attack, from where they stormed the hall centuries earlier. The fact that when Link removes the blade from its pedestal, time begins to move again, implies that the pedestal activates this ability somehow. If the Master Sword is the key, the pedestal of time is the lock. Just like how Link could use this lock and key to access the flow of time during Ocarina, someone during Ganondorf's assault centuries before the Wind Waker used them offensively to stop time for the aggressors. This ability is overwhelmingly powerful, and is a central feature of the Master Sword, though we haven't seen it used extensively since Ocarina of Time. It's interesting to think though, after the desolation of the Great Calamity in Breath of the Wild, Link holds the key to time itself, Perhaps we'll see a return to this ability in the upcoming sequel. Another exceptional ability the Master Sword's been shown to have, and only in one game in the series, makes this sword terrifyingly powerful. In A Link to the Past, the Master Sword not only has the power to repel evil, but can call down lightning, summon gigantic explosions, or even cause earthquakes beneath Link's feet. During the game, Link is able to obtain three ancient medallions from stone tablets. The Bomos Medallion, the Quake Medallion, and the Aether Medallion. These are not only some of the coolest, but some of the most powerful items in the entire Zelda series. Bomos causes the entire screen to erupt in explosions, which incinerate any regular enemy on screen. Quake summons an earthquake, turning any regular enemy on the ground into a slime, and the Aether Medallion calls down lightning and a polar wind, freezing grounded enemies solid. 
These insanely powerful medallions haven't appeared in the series since their debut, except for Four Swords Adventures where they appear more as single-use power-ups. In both games though, they just appear to be magic items, not innate powers of the Master Sword. And in fact, in Four Swords Adventures, they're just that. Only the Quake and Bomos medallions appear, but they were apparently enchanted by the evil mages, and appear as disposable giant discs which can be carried and thrown by the Lynx. But in A Link to the Past, the medallions are entirely different. The Aether and Bomos medallions are obtained from ancient stone tablets, which require Link to hold up the Master Sword in order to receive them. Once obtained, the medallion's magic can be used like a normal item, but using the medallion causes Link to perform different actions with the Master Sword. Bomos causes Link to perform a great spin attack, Quake causes him to thrust the sword into the ground, and Aether hold the sword into the skies and these medallions can't be used without the Master Sword. If Link leaves the blade with the blacksmith, he's completely unable to access the magic of these medallions. That's because I believe these medallions don't act like magic spells, but instead they unlock forgotten powers of the Master Sword, divine powers designed by the goddess Hylia. The magic of these medallions might not be the artifacts themselves, but the fact that they allow access to the Master Sword's hidden powers controlling the world around it. Link obviously needs the Master Sword to use these medallions, and has to perform different actions with the blade to cast the spells, but why then does he need the medallions themselves? Why doesn't the Master Sword have these incredible powers in any other Zelda game? Well, I think it's important that the Master Sword unlocks these powers through medallions. Medallions have obviously had a major role in another Zelda game. Ocarina of Time. When Link awakens each of the six sages, he's rewarded with a medallion representing its respective sage, a physical manifestation of their powers. These medallions look incredibly similar to the three found during A Link to the Past. They're disc-like objects, with a symbol denoting their powers on the front. But while the set of three medallions are largely unexplained, the set of six are of course the power of each sage which, at some point in early development, were meant to be wielded and used by Link to channel the magic of these individuals, much like those in A Link to the Past. Remnants of this planned mechanic remain in the game, such as the entrance to the Shadow Temple, where a circle of unlit torches surround a symbol of the Fire Medallion. In the final game, Link must use Din's fire to simultaneously light all torches, opening the door, but it'd make far more sense if this was originally intended to be a puzzle solved by the Fire Medallion item. Could the three A Link to the Past medallions represent the same thing? Could they represent the power of sages? Power which allows the Master Sword to perform incredibly powerful magic. Sages are obviously closely tied to the power of the Master Sword. The most direct example is of course the Wind Waker's Sages of Earth and Wind, who offer their prayers in their respective temples, praying that the blade retains its power to repel evil, and when slain, this power is extinguished from the sword. But it's also possible that sages are responsible not only for empowering the Master Sword, but for its creation too. The Master Sword's origin as a blade forged by the sages is referenced in Twilight Princess, where Zelda refers to the blade as having been crafted by the wisdom of ancient sages. While at first this seems to conflict with the idea that Hylia crafted the Goddess Sword, which was later tempered into the Master Sword by Link, the two ideas aren't mutually exclusive. In the Temple of Hylia, an ancient structure dating back to the era in which the Goddess herself walked the Earth, it's possible to find the emblems of the Six Sages, meaning that a group of sages existed alongside the Goddess Hylia, possibly during the time in which the Goddess Sword was forged. With this in mind, it's more than possible that the blade was made by the sages at the request of the goddess Hylia, or by Hylia with the aid of the sages, making both origin stories for the sword true. If the Quake, Bomos, and Aether medallions are the power of sages, manifested into physical objects, then it's very possible that the power to summon earthquakes, explosions, and call down lightning and freezing wind aren't simply the result of magic spells, but that it's a power the Master Sword is able to channel. The power of sages, just like its power to repel evil. A power which we're yet to see properly return in the series. 
The Blade of Evil's Bane is undoubtedly the most consistently powerful weapon in the series. But the more we look into it, the more it seems that the blade isn't an almighty weapon, a Mary Sue sword which intrinsically houses this overwhelming power of light. It's the amalgamation of the prayers and powers of a large variety of different characters. While it's possible that it was simply crafted by Hylia, a perhaps more likely origin is that it was forged with the help of ancient sages, chosen mortal individuals in an age long past. Overwhelmingly powerful abilities like calling down lightning, earthquakes and explosions again may be the result of sages pouring their power into the blade. The sword's signature ability, its power to repel evil, is null and void without the prayers of mortal sages, or the human reincarnation of Hylia. Without these prayers, its edges are dull and its power gone. Even the sword's secondary purpose as the key to time itself, coupled with a lock in the form of the Temple of Time, might simply be the power of sages, rather than a power native to the blade. The Temple of Time was built sometime after Skyward Sword by Raru, alongside other unknown sages, to defend the entrance to the Sacred Realm. These sages used the Master Sword as the key to this dimension, designing the mechanism used to access the Triforce. If they constructed the Temple of Time itself, it's more than likely that they designed its function as a port in which the Master Sword can dock, using their power to grant the sword and the temple their influence over time. And just like A Link to the Past's medallions, the power of Raru, chief architect of the Temple of Time and the Chamber of Sages, is housed within Link, in the form of the Light Medallion. Perhaps whenever Link jumps through time, he's just using the magic of this medallion, channeled through the Master Sword. In a way, this source of the Master Sword's abilities is fitting. Accompanying Link on his most dangerous adventures isn't a blade of limitless power, but a blade made powerful by the hopes, the prayers, the effort of mortal individuals. It's in line with a central idea of the Zelda series. Rather than an almighty weapon forged by a goddess, the Master Sword could instead be the result of the combined efforts of simple mortals. When the chosen hero strikes down evil, saving Hyrule from tyranny and torment, he's not alone. He's wielding a vessel carrying the power and hope of all of Hyrule's people. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Be sure to check out Heroic Replica's auctions or website with the links in the description. And another huge thank you to Dave for sending out such a beautiful sword. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.